Hi, I'm Luke Sherbell. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. I'm here with Alan Steinheimer, and we're going to talk about lighting control. So this is from a perspective of two, you know, owner operators. You've got a lot more stuff than I do. I have just, you know, one small truck worth of stuff. So how can we control those lights? And then thinking ahead, you know, when we are on bigger jobs, how do we control a few more lights? But really, it's maybe, what, 30 units? We're not a whole lot larger than that ever, uh, not, or not very often. And so let's walk through, where did we start? Well, in the beginning, <laughs> right after the dinosaurs, they invented these boards. Um, th it, this Leprechaun is a fairly simple version of this. There were ETC boards that had screens and all sorts of stuff. And so uh, this worked for uh, a long time for tungsten lighting, um, but... So it's a uh, Leprechaun 24 channel board. That's right. Yeah. 624, Leprechaun 624. And then I continued to use it in the beginning when I was using LEDs, but at, with every passing year, the manufacturers put more and more channels onto the lights. And so uh, in the beginning, we could run uh, sky panels off of four channels. Right. Well, you know, the latest iteration, like working with Stellar, uses 27 channels. Yeah. Th this light right here is a German light product. Strip they, light. They call it the uh, X-Bar 20. It's for a project that I'm doing uh, in a couple days. And so I came down and uh, fooled around with it on this. The smallest uh, number of channels you can use is 20. They call that the ah. compressed yeah. version, the compressed mode. And uh, if you want to access everything, it's 89 channels. <laughs> <laughs> so that's sort of the state of where LEDs yeah. are headed. Now, this is a theatrical instrument, way right. more controls than what we use, like with a sky panel. But on Still, a stereo tube. Yeah, and a stereo yeah. tube, apparently the, those can go over 100 channels yeah. to have the pixel control. Yeah. This, this board is a dinosaur, and pretty soon, I, I just still use it for tungsten shoots. I can't use it for too much else anymore. Right. Now, that said, I am still using this board. DMX it. This is DMX it because it's battery powered, and now the latest version, the uh, DMX it 524E, actually has Lumen Radio built in, a uh, transmitter, and so, and with a little link button right here, yep. uh, which is really convenient. Now you don't even have to have a Centena transmitter. Uh, and so I've got control now, you know, over our, our key light there and our fill light. Oh, that's fill right there. And then, um, um, what is this one? Uh, oh, that's color. Oopsie. Um, <laughs> there. I guess that's my key light. Uh, yeah, right. We're going to keep it down. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, I, you know, I can squeeze on three to six lights depending upon what they are and what protocol I run. And this is so fast and easy to set up that I'm still using it on three quarters of my shoots. Yeah, and you've got the sliders, so it's nice and physical. That's right. And that's a 24 board. This is a 24 board. That's so much smaller. It's got the uh, Wi-Fi in it. Yep. And, uh, and then they just had a firmware update. What happened there? So now you can access the other channels besides 1 through 24. Uh, you can basically ch uh, change the DMX address hit change, and now, let's say you go to 100, uh, or 101, yep. and you hit change, and now slider one is gonna control channel 101. So you could go and basically set some lights, and then go back to 001, and go back to say your main lights are the ones that are changing most often. So in a, in a nutshell, you can take a 24 channel board and do a, an entire universe. Yeah, uh, most people are probably gonna laugh at us, sure, or me, because I'm the one using it. Uh, but anyway, so that's sort of the state of of uh, this board. Uh, it's still working for me, you know. Yeah, uh, it's just too fast, right? Uh, because even though LEDs are fast, uh, if your board setup takes you know half an hour, I can set this up in five to ten minutes, right? If your board setup takes half an hour or 40 minutes to enter in things, yeah. then I might be behind the curve. Right, right. If it, there's a pre-light and you have time, then that all makes sense. Okay, so uh, this is actually a, a nice step up. Uh, and now the fact that you can do more than 24 channels on it, uh, in fact, you know, uh, 500 plus channels, 
that's pretty slick. So uh, from here, where did we go? Well, for me, I had gone to Luminaire. Yep. Uh, Same here. And it took me a long time to even like it yep. a, a little bit. <laughs> I, I mean, that's where age doesn't help me. You yeah. know, yeah. learning the software was a little more difficult. At one point, I was fooling around the shop and I hit a button and the whole screen disappeared. And I, yeah. I spent like 30 minutes trying to get it back and I, I gave up. I went home <laughs> that night. And the next day, I, someone else was in the shop and said, hey, do you know how to get the screen back on Lumina? Oh yeah, right here. Yeah. And, you know, two seconds. Yeah, blackout. It's yeah. just. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now, can you actually control a light like this with that? We can. Um, not only that, now this was a little behind. This is one of my beefs is that when I went to the fixture profile in mm -hmm. here, it was the wrong one. Uh, oh. It had a single profile for GLP, obviously for a different light. Right. Uh, and I couldn't even get the 20 channel compressed version up. So I had to go through and program each channel uh, yep. one through 20. Well, there's, there's the half hour. Right. There's the half right. hour right there. Now, if you're doing a big theatrical event, maybe it's worthwhile, you sure. know, but on an everyday video shoot kind of thing, yeah. uh, we don't have that kind of time. Right. So right. this is not an everyday light. So yeah. maybe it's a little unfair. Um, I've been running this uh, with the Airy Skylink. Yep. There's also the AKS that yep. you own. Yep. Um, so either one of those will sync up with this. The Airy one's been pretty good. I got it mainly because at first I thought maybe I'm going to switch over to Stellar. Right. I tried Stellar for a month. I love the auto populate feature on it. Yeah. Uh, just RDM. basically you yeah. turn it on and it finds everything and assigns it a channel. I mean, right. that was pretty brilliant. Yeah, that seems like that would be the top of the mountain as far as setup goes. But as we found, that's, it's not a gimme when you have lots of different manufacturers that you deal with. So version 1.0 or 1. whatever it is with Stellar doesn't do non-airy products. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm using non-airy products every single day. I can't, yeah. I can't have two boards. Yeah. That, so I gave up on Stellar. I'm hoping maybe 2.0 will access other manufacturers. Yep. Everyone's got, I mean, I, the manufacturers are not cooperating with each other. I hear from people that, you know, they're not revealing some of the code, underlying code things, yeah. and that, uh, you know, so they're not necessarily cooperating, especially like Aries now trying to get into the, you know, dimming software. Right. Um, and so maybe they've got a reason not to share some of that RDM stuff with, you know, other manufacturers. Who it's knows? Disappointing. I yep. don't know. Yep. It's yep. Hard, hard to know exactly. Yeah, and it's interesting that you know some people get into uh, just software, other people get into uh, just hardware, and then some people are getting into both. And so uh, um, that sort of combination, and a combination, I guess, would be this guy. What's what's uh? So then the, one of the latest things uh, on loan, courtesy of uh, Light Gear, Exolux Control One. Um, and uh, it, it's got some interesting um, positive characteristics. Uh, you can cycle through uh, so different touch screen. different yeah touch screen, different fixtures. So now I'm, here I have fixtures one through six appearing. Uh, I programmed some stuff in the other day, uh, and this looks like I'm not sure what that is. Let's look at one. Uh, so you're looking at one fixture there? One, I believe, yeah, oh, it's actually ID'd here. Airy Sky Panel Mode 2. Um, so that's pretty much the simplest mode. Um, Can you uh, go left it, or right, or is that, those are the only uh, No, aspects. then you need to go here. Um, you can see this. Mm -hmm. um, that's all your... Uh, your dimmers. Yeah, all, all, but uh, in terms of a row of uh, uh, things, um, let's see. Here's the fader uh, menu, um, and I can access all 512 here. I can go uh, so, uh, so, so this is a, like a quick way to get to cycle through all 512 tells you the DMX channel down here. So now this is telling me that I've got um, 
my eight sliders here, which correspond at this point to the DMX numbers. Uh, but what, I, what I'm not so fond of on this is, well, first off, the screen's a little small. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit of the toggling thing where you have to toggle back and forth. Um, uh, here's, um, so uh, like this is, there's fixture three. I think that's a light mat. Uh, let's see, yeah, light gear hybrid plus. Uh, so there's only really two controls here. Um, so this is sort of a great way to control little individual things. Mm -hmm. It seems like it would be a difficult way to run a bigger set. Like if you're going to have different scenes. Different scenes, or you want to program different scenes, or... Um, you had 30 fixtures. Yeah, I, doing a lot I, of scrolling. it's hard for me to imagine using 30 fixtures with this. Mm -hmm. um, the buttons also... Uh, move things back and forth. Um, okay. So two different ways of changing the yeah. parameters, which is yeah. Cool. And the, and the, what's nice about this is it has the fine adjust, you know, so that you can dial in something much more exactly, you mm -hmm. know, aiming for color temperature or right. something like that. Right. But it just feels so darn small. I I, I love the fact that it's basically got. Um, the lumen radio transmitter built into the whole thing. Right, so it's like this, but instead of having physical sliders, you've got uh, digital sliders, virtual sliders, and you have, uh, like here, you'd have to write everything down for your information of, of your units. Here you have it as a part of a library that could be updatable and all that kind of stuff. Right, I mean, the thing is, it doesn't allow you to type in light gear, you know, Number mm -hmm. number four or light map right. four number right. one so light map really four number it. two yeah yeah well I mean on this it takes time to yep. label it all but you sure. can you can color code it right it's like this is sort of like fairly basic even yeah. though it's powerful it's still fairly basic right 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 and that's similar to sort of the uh, the gaffer control yes you know uh, from from Europe. Uh, although this is European too, right? It is. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so, yeah, so everybody's like working on the interface and it's really cool to have like this, having the Lumen Radio built into your controller. So you can walk around with it. Then something else that's come out uh, recently is uh, software that's similar to Luminaire called Blackout. Okay, I'm just gonna jump in here because when we were shooting that other episode, I hadn't spent any time with Blackout. Now I've spent a little more time, still on the front end of it, but it's really blowing me away. And yes, it's in between Luminaire and Nomad, but it's a little closer to Nomad. Having spent some time with Nomad, it's actually easier to get into this software. And because you can do it by touch and you can also do it by uh, command line. So it's nice to have the pad. I even went out and got an iPad Pro just because having the larger surface space and the, you know, uh, faster GPU, whatever, it, it, uh, it works well. And so in a sense, this is like getting the touchscreen for Nomad without having all the need for training because of all the depth there. And uh, this seems like it's exactly what I'm looking for. Built by someone who does what we do, uh, Jeff Brink, guy out on the East Coast, awesome. So, uh, and he's very responsive, and I think, you know, for one universe, it's gonna be like 500 bucks. Totally worth it. So what I've done here is I've just set up a couple units, uh, different manufacturers, and just to show you how simple it is to sort of have everybody talk to each other. So, you've got an S30. It's got a Centena, I've got it hooked into the USB. Uh, then we've got a Select 31, and that you know has the internal lumen radio. And you wanna set, when you go to DMX, when you're setting it up, you go to DMX, and you set your address, and you wanna set your dimmer curve to linear. That, that's just so that the controller lines up with the software. I've got a little uh, LED dado, the 90 water, and that is, you know, the DMX ballast 
and uh, controller, and that has a battery operated antenna. And then, you know, just a, a Titan, and the Titan isn't going through its little transmitter or anything, it's just in CRMX mode, and that's talking to. I just had the a AKS down here, and I can pull that off now that it's charged, and that can be on battery too. So basically, you can have your iPad and your AKS walk around and away you go. That's that's pretty slick. So um, that's my little setup here. And then here it says channel view. And I've got fixture controls. Uh, there's, you know, uh, different menus that you can pull up. If I click on the sky panel, it, it brings up all the different uh, parts of the unit that I can uh, manipulate. Uh, it's in ultimate mode, so that's 24 channels. If I press on this a little longer, it, it brings up the attributes, and so I can see them here, and when I change them here, it changes here as well. And so uh, now I can press on the color, but nothing happens because I haven't chosen it uh, as it's... Um, uh, See, it's channel mode, so I click on that. It brings up HSI, RGBW, gel, uh, XY, and effects. I can go to HSI, and now I can manipulate uh, the color just like that. So, you know, very simply, and now if I want to get back, I'm back, and if I click on all the units that I have here now that are, are networked. Uh, so I just click on those. Oh, here, let's get out of here. And then click on that, click on this, click on there. And now uh, just by choosing all those, I can, uh, you know, manipulate them all. I can ma manipulate them in uh, in color, and uh, so it's sort of that simple. <laughs> and and now this is the channel view. So that's like these are all like all the faders. You know, here are the physical faders for my my little setup here. Uh, these are the virtual faders, and then uh, this is uh, when I'm patching everything. Now what I did was I have maybe 30 to 40 DMXable units that I own, period. And so I just decided I'm gonna put them all in. And, you know, I've got 33 uh, faders, so to speak. And then I can just go on to a job and which whatever units I use, they'll already be in their DMX mode. I can just pull this up and click, click, click. And then, you know, I'll, I'll have them all ready to go just like that. I don't have to set them up every time. I'm just good to go. And uh, wow, you know, that's awesome. And I have them all on one page. You know, that's what I really wanted from Luminaire. And that's what I got with Nomad. But then Nomad has multiple pages, you know, that affect what you're doing. And so this is just simplified with a lot of the same power. So. Uh, I still have to learn, you know, how to get into effects with uh, the Astera. It's early days. I'm really psyched to learn more about this. I'm glad I went the Nomad route that I, you know, have that capability as well. And I hope to sort of stick with that. But I think I found the software that I want to hang out with. And uh, knowing that the person who developed it is doing what we do and can understand, you know, the issues we have and is actually, you know, a step ahead. Awesome. Uh, and it's working with all the stuff that I had already as far as hardware is concerned. You so. know, I mean, the one interesting thing about it is that it does feel like we're headed to this world where um, each fader is basically representing a light Whereas, like with Luminaire, 
you know, each fader is one of the characteristics or attributes. And it seems like that's going to be a better world where mm -hmm. you only need to go to the attributes once in a while. Right. You're a lot of times dealing with dimming. Yeah, it'd be I sort mean, of like closing stuff down so that you have, yeah. And, and that's what's nice about this. You can have uh, control right there, and you have a very simple, um, it's sort of like the magic sheets in Nomad where you actually see representation on, a, on the same page. It's just not quite that deep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Simplified. Well, uh, I'm going to let you be the pioneer, <laughs> but I might fall in your footsteps before long. Yeah. Well, and then just one more thing. I mean, uh, with Nomad, uh, I picked up this command key. So this is like a, what they call a, a wing. So you have your laptop and you have the different, you know, pages of control. One of those pages would be these keys and all these keys would be virtual. And so you, you'd have to use your, you know, you use your uh, mouse to click on them. Well, this is like, you know, barely over $300 instead of like three grand for the, the name brand one. But, um, and these are, have a nice press to them. Uh, this you hook up, you know, just by... Um, uh, Ethernet? Well, USB. US, USB to your laptop. Mm -hmm. And then you can also put the, the dongle in here mm -hmm. so you can protect it rather than having it, you know, on, your, on an adapter from your laptop. So you can have the dongle here. You hook this up to your laptop. Now that's one less page you have to turn to while you want to be looking at your, your, you know, magic sheets. And so, and then you can click the blind, you can go to live, you can um, do all that stuff, but manually. Now it'd be nice to have another wing that has just a couple virtual, you know, a couple physical sliders so you could put your virtual submasters onto physical submasters. Uh, so anyway, that would be my next wing. Uh, when when I get to a, a project like that, so I think, you know, I, I have good feeling about blackout. I think that is going the direction of most jobs for me. And then, nomad is when you're going a little step up, maybe a live event where you want to have that uh, five pin hardwire coming right to your uh, controller, and and you need some depth and some, you know, ability to play with movers and stuff like that. Um, more practically, so. Yeah, the wireless is not foolproof. I mean, I had no. a job recently on a stage, and we had, um, I think, five, six 120, uh, Airy Sky Panel 120s up mm -hmm. as backlight, and they, we needed to do a lot of flashing, almost uh, like a strobe kind of thing. And we had them on wireless, and um, it was slow to respond from a grand MA board uh, a little delay. And, and yeah, and so um, we ended up hardwiring. Uh, mm -hmm. I already had them sequenced up to one, so it wasn't right. that much hard, harder to run a, a wire. Right. But the wire solved all the problems. Ah. So <laughs> if it's getting complicated, I would probably still, you know, go back to hardwire, you yeah. know, like, yeah. and wireless is not without, is not, you know, no. rock solid on every occasion. Yeah, I definitely do live events with Wi-Fi, but it's, I don't feel good about it. <laughs> yeah, I prefer to have, have the, the, the direct uh, hardwire. But yeah, you know, it's uh, still a brave new world, but man, uh, all the different choices and they all have sort of pluses and minuses. The good thing is we'll have great resale value. Uh, no, we probably no. won't. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, luckily, well. luckily now because the the units have their you know dimmer packs inside of them, we're not spending money on you know a lot of extra I don't know cabling and 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 uh, dimmers and stuff like that. We're just spending you know the five hundred to a thousand dollars on you know the the software and. And then, you know, a lot of this software is working with the old hardware. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it could be worse. Yeah. Well, it has been interesting. The Centena um, wire, Illumin Radio, and the Airy products have been pretty flawless integrating together. So, yeah. uh, I would say Lumen Radio, uh, 
you made a good system. It seems to, you yeah. know, doesn't seem to be sort of uh, inner manufacturer problems with that. Right, right. Yeah, and then if we could incorporate RDM, so much the better. Yeah, well, we're all hoping <laughs> for that. Uh, when I was using Stellar and I, and I used the auto-populate thing for the first yeah. time, it was like <laughs> a hallelujah moment. I was just yeah. so excited. Yeah. Uh, but, you know. And I have heard from the theater folks that, you know, sometimes they start with that and then they turn it off because it can create uh, some, you know, issues, you know, I don't know, with movers, with, with, with lights that have a little more need for networking. I don't know. Yeah. Because RDM is sort of this two-way thing, right. it, it, can, it can interfere. But you know what? Uh, it's all kind of woo-woo mystery stuff to me at this yeah, point. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, uh, there you go. Just an overview, not a how-to, not a tutorial. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Super simple setup, just wanted to show you a sec. I've got four lights, uh, you know, basically got the uh, key, which is a S60. So <laughs> uh, that's at 50%. Then we've got a little scratch, so that's at 10%, you know. Um, and then we've got a uh, freestyle so yeah just a little accent on the uh, tree over there that's actually just one tube so that's there and then we have outside a little uh, daylight HD that's at 11 percent so there you can kind of see uh, what that's doing so just real simple sure you don't have to have it on uh, the blackout system but it's very easy to set it up get it going and then you can sit by camera, work with the DP, and, you know, tweak your lights very quickly between setups.